With a wild center, this is Lunchtime Live. We're talking about nature and exciting wildlife. Encounters with otters and owls too. From Tupper Lake right to you. Learn about the plants and trees. There's so much to explore and see. Lunchtime Live, it's time to start the show. From the wild center, here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Nature Lab. Michael here to send you out to explore birds with our fellows. So they'll be diving in, taking a look at different bird species that live right here in the Adirondacks, and giving you some tools and tips on how to get out and observe them on your own. So without further ado, send you over with them. Happy exploring, everybody. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Nature Lab. I'm Corey, a museum fellow here at the Wild Center. Today, we're gonna to be diving back into the world of birds by looking at our local bird residents here in the Adirondacks. The environmental diversity of the Adirondack Park supports more than 100 different species of birds throughout the year, some of which you can observe in your own backyard. Here at the Wild Center, we have Feeder Alley, which is a row of bird feeders right behind me on Wild Walk that allow people to quietly watch the birds as they eat some bird seed. Before we check out our Adirondack backyard birds, I want you to think about what kind of birds you see in your backyard. How big are they? Have you noticed any specific features about them? And what birds can't you see in your backyard? Pause the video for a few moments and write them down or just think about it in your head. Okay, now that we've thought about what birds you all see in your backyard, let's check out our backyard here at the Wild Center. The most common species of birds seen at Feeder Alley are the black-capped chickadee, the red-breasted nuthatch, white-breasted nuthatch, downy woodpecker, and hairy woodpecker. What? Black capped chickadees are very common at bird feeders and they are easy to identify by their dark black head or cap. You'll see these birds take seeds from the feeder, then fly away with the seed to eat at a different location. This is because they take longer to eat the seed and don't want their food stolen, or they're hiding it for later. Red breasted nuthatches are small birds that you'll see climbing on trees or feeders upside down. They have a blue back, white and orange bellies, and a dark eye stripe. White-breasted nuthatches have a very similar shape to the red-breasted nuthatch because they are so closely related, but you can tell them apart using the differences in their coloring. The main difference is right in their name. The white-breasted nuthatch has a white chest, while the red-breasted nuthatch has a red chest. The downy and hairy woodpecker look almost exactly the same, but there's one distinguishing feature that you can use to tell them apart, their beaks. Downy woodpeckers have a beak that is about half the size of their head, while hairy woodpeckers' beaks are longer, about the same length of their head. The bird in this video is a hairy woodpecker. You can tell by looking at its beak. Though we see these species at our feeders a lot, they are not fully representative of the diversity of bird species in the Adirondacks because we are only observing one kind of habitat during one season of the year and only looking at birds who want to eat seeds from a feeder. The Adirondacks have a range of habitats that can support different species of all kinds of lifestyles. And because of this area's distinct seasons, we also have bird species that only live here during certain times of the year. Because of the severity of our winters, the number of bird species we can see in the park goes way down as it gets colder. Summer residents like the colorful warblers, vireos, and flycatchers all travel south to avoid our extensive snowfall and cold temperatures. But there are still many species that are hardy enough to be year-round Adirondack locals, and we saw a few of them on our feeders earlier. Birds of many different families stay active in the park during the winter months, usually utilizing different habitats and lifestyles to find shelter and food. But one thing they all have in common is the need to stay warm during the winter. Insulating feathers help birds conserve energy and retain body heat. But when the temperature is below freezing, as it typically is during these Adirondack winters, birds need to use other methods to minimize energy and heat loss. Our smaller year-round birds are particularly susceptible to the harsh winter weather because they expend so much energy for their body size. So their adaptations for surviving the winter are a bit more extreme than our larger local birds. For example, common red poles, a finch species that is prevalent around the Adirondacks, will dive into snowbanks for shelter, taking advantage of the insulating properties of snow. Chickadees can rest in a state of controlled hypothermia, called torpor, in times of extremely cold temperatures. They'll lower their heartbeat from 2,000 beats per minute to 500 beats per minute in order to reduce their metabolism and limit energy loss. Many birds, like nuthatches and woodpeckers, seek warmth in the cavities of trees, which provide a really good shelter from winter storms. 
Woodpeckers prefer new cavities to nest in, so they will make new ones most winters, which leave many empty cavities for birds who don't make their own, like owls and smaller raptors. Some species will even communally huddle together in cavities to conserve body heat. Many birds prepare for the winter months by building up their food and energy, whether it be through hiding and storing food so that they have a stable supply, or by eating as much food as they can during the fall so that they have enough body fat to provide energy for the winter. Regardless if the bird species is going to brave the cold weather of the Adirondacks or risk a long migration to warmer temperatures, the fall season is a time for most birds to stock up on food, which can look very different for different species. Now over to Derek to tell us about the diversity of bird lifestyles. There's no shortage of food for birds in the Adirondack Park, which is partially why it attracts such a diversity of bird species. Foraging birds like the grouse, pheasants, and wild turkeys primarily stick to the ground while searching for insects and seeds within the forest. Up higher in the forest canopy are the thrushes and woodpeckers, as well as the finches, nuthatches, and chickadees we saw earlier. Some of these foragers, including the blue and Canada jays, will cache their food, which means they'll hide and store it for later. The forest provides plenty of spaces to find, hide, and even hunt for food. Our birds of prey, like owls, hawks, and falcons, will use the forest as a hunting ground for small mammals, amphibians and reptiles like frogs, snakes, and salamanders, and even other birds. Some raptors hunt better in open fields and marshes, like the American kestrel, who will hover over wide open spaces to find prey. Scavengers like the turkey vultures, crows, and ravens don't typically stick to one type of habitat, as they go wherever they can find food. The hundreds of lakes, ponds, and streams in the Adirondacks also provide plenty of food for many different species of birds. There is no shortage of waterfowl to spot in the summer. Many migratory species like ducks, herons, bitterns, kingfishers, and loons come to the Adirondacks to breed and have their young before flying south for the winter. Raptors like the merlin also take advantage of the species-rich water habitats. These birds like to perch in the trees surrounding a lake or pond and hunt smaller birds, mammals, and reptiles. These boreal birds have made all of the unique habitats of the Adirondacks into suitable homes where they can find food, shelter, and mates throughout the year. The environmental diversity of the Adirondack Park supports more than 100 different species of birds throughout the year, some of which you can see in your own backyard. It's impossible to talk about all of the unique and amazing Adirondack birds in just one lesson, but I hope this was a good introduction into the kinds of birds you might see here and how the habitats available shape the diversity of birds in an area. Tune in next week for a deeper look into how birds navigate and thrive in their environment. Now back to Michael for a new activity. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had fun exploring with Corey, Morgan, and Derek, checking out all the wonderful bird species that live here in the Adirondacks, both in the winter and year round. So your challenge today can be found at wildcenter.org slash nature lab, and that is to get out and do some birding yourself. So now that you've seen some of these different birds, let's see what we can find near us. And to help you with that process, we've created a handy data sheet for you. And uh, let's think about some of the materials you could use while you go out and do that birding. So for the most part, all you really need are your science skills, uh, your sense of observation and getting out and just observing things around you. But if you'd like, you can add the data sheet, you can add binoculars and uh, a tablet. So something like a tablet or a smartphone work really, really well if you want to use some really, really great uh, apps from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology as you move into the, the last phase of this project, which is to identify your birds. Okay, so I said there are phases. There are a couple different phases that we're going to do today with our challenge. Phase one, you're going to try to find some birds near where you live. So try to find those birds. Hopefully we found some last week, but try to find those birds and try to observe what they're doing. So what are they doing? Are they interacting with other species? Are they interacting with the environment around them? What are their, what we'd call behaviors? And think about why they're doing those behaviors. Next step is to try to describe those birds in as much detail as you can. It can be their color, their size, their shape, uh, what they're doing. So are they vocalizing? Are they staying put? Are they moving around? And compare that with other species. Are you looking at just one species or are there multiple species in the spot you're observing? And then the next step is to finally identify those birds. So you could use your prior knowledge. You could use things like field guides, uh, the internet, or 
um, you could use some really wonderful apps from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and others. So there are two apps that are super, super useful. Um, there's the Merlin Bird ID and eBird, which can help you identify your birds and add that knowledge to the body of science. So you can add to citizen science or community science projects, identifying those birds and letting uh, scientists from around the world know where they are. And that's super cool. Uh, so I hope you have fun and hope you enjoy uh, getting out and exploring the birds around you. And I hope you make some discoveries of your own. Have fun, everybody. We'll see you again next week.